Hi, Dr. Masso. How are you doing today? I'm very well, Gilbert. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. For sure. So maybe you can start off by introducing a bit about your company, Lisada Therapeutics. Sure, I'm happy to do so. So Lasada Therapeutics is a clinical stage a therapeutic development company that's working in the area of novel technologies to treat solid tumors. So these are cancers that are very difficult to treat. They are the kinds of cancers that have very poor prognoses for patients. They usually uh, don't respond very well to available treatments. And our new technology is designed to improve the, um, the response that patients have and the outcomes that they have as well. So we are a small company, 27 people. Our headquarters is in New Jersey, but many of our uh, employees are around the United States. And we have a number of uh, clinical trials ongoing now with um, important data coming over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. Great to hear that. Uh, maybe you can just tell us more about your advanced asset certificate, uh, also known as LSTA1. So how does it position itself in the solid tumor treatments, and, and is this treatment unique that you are having there? Well, thank you. Yes, sertepatide or LISTA-1 is, in fact, a very unique asset. It has a mechanism of action that allows it to take uh, the, the two main obstacles to successful treatment for tumors, that is, uh, overcoming the barrier that the stroma or this layer of cells that tumors present uh, is, is present, and also the tumor microenvironment, which is immunosuppressive. We can overcome that by using sertepatide, and that allows us to help make your immune system recognize the tumors more effectively and combat them. It allows immunotherapies, when they are co-administered with sertepatide, to work better. And sertepatide also helps to inhibit metastases, meaning it stops the spread of cancer to other organs. So it's a very unique mechanism of action, and it's designed to work in combination with other anti-cancer agents, chemotherapies, radiotherapies, immunotherapies, antisense therapies, even cell therapies. So in that regard, we're actually complementary to every other cancer therapy. We're not really in competition. We're not trying to take market share. We're trying to be a, an adjuvant or an augmented uh, uh, technology. And so I think it gives us a very broad applicability and an opportunity to, uh, to see many different uses of our product in a variety of different tumors in combination with all sorts of different things. Oh, interesting indeed. So let's just talk a bit more on some of your recent developments. Uh, you recently announced the Q1 financials and some business updates. Do you want to share uh, with us a bit more some of the highlights of that? Sure. So first on the financial side, we, we remain very financially stable. Unlike many small cap companies, we have almost uh, two years worth of cash on our balance sheet and enough capital to fund all of our ongoing and planned programs through to completion to data. That's really important and very unusual for a company like ours. Um, and then on the execution side, we've talked about the fact that our lead program uh, in phase 2B for pancreatic cancer, that's certified, uh, will be reading out data toward the uh, fourth quarter of this year. That's really going to be seminal data for the company. And we have programs in cholangiocarcinoma, which have enrolled much faster than expected due to the enthusiasm of the investigators and the high unmet medical need. We have a study running in Europe in brain cancer that's doing very well, and other studies in uh, gastroesophageal cancer that are also enrolling in combination with immunotherapy. So overall, all of our clinical programs are executing on or ahead of schedule. Our financial situation remains stable, and importantly, we're coming into the period when we will have a lot of uh, hopefully positive data to report on all of these trials. Great to hear. So we also understand that you have an ongoing clinical trial uh, with the Chinese partners in China. So can you tell us how's, uh, how's that going, coming along? Our partner in China is Chilu Pharmaceutical. It's a large private company and very well known. Uh, they actually produce um, generic cancer agents for uh, sale in the United States and, and of course, in, in China as well. Um, 
we have been working with them for, for several years, and they recently announced the start of their phase two trial uh, in pancreatic cancer. They are mirroring uh, all of the work that we're doing, so we work in very close collaboration to ensure consistency and, um, and, and hopefully that they'll be able to demonstrate the same type of positive results in China that we expect to, re to report outside of China. That has been the case so far. Their phase one data corroborated our phase one data. And now with phase two underway, we hope that their phase two will um, show the same thing that our ASCEND trial should be showing by the end of the year. And recently in March, I noticed you announced that FDA has granted a rare predictive disease designation to LSTA-1 for the yeah. treatment of osteosarcoma. So can you share uh, with us uh, why this, this seems like the market has uh, sort of like responded with some uh, pretty good volume and trading that day? Tell us why do you think the, the market feel that as a significant development? I think, I think you know, uh, investigators who are familiar with the rare pediatric disease designation and its benefits in the pharmaceutical industry understand that it's a you know it's the beginning of a value creation pathway for for a company so what what this means is that uh, once we get an approval for sertepatide in the treatment of osteosarcoma in in pediatric patients we would then be eligible to receive a rare pediatric disease voucher. And in order to receive the voucher, you have to first have been designated a rare pediatric disease designee. And the voucher has uh, very special benefits. It allows the holder of the voucher to use it to get an accelerated review and approval on, a, um, on any product in their portfolio. So that we kept it, if we kept it, we could use it to get another approval or sertepatide or another product in our portfolio, but it can be sold to another company who can use it for something else. And in the past, these have sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, more recently, it's been a little bit more modest, still in the area of $100 million, but that would be an enormous windfall for a company like ours. So upon approval in osteosarcoma, we would have eligibility to receive that voucher, and that could represent a large financial windfall for the company. Well, it seems like a lot of things are going on with your company in the positive yes. side. So, and overall, I, I I noticed the last two years, 2022, 23, the overall biotech markets has not been very great. Yeah. But since the beginning of this year, and your, your share price uh, steadily growing. And can you tell us any in the next 12 months, what kind of milestone you're expecting uh, the company to do uh, even better than this? Yeah. I'm happy to do so. And, and I would refer to the audience to our website. On the website in the investor section, there's a copy of our corporate presentation. And in that presentation, there's a milestone slide. And that will show you uh, laid out over time for every program what news is expected. But generally speaking, we will be announcing execution data, execu um, excuse me, clinical trial operations, execution milestones, and data milestones almost every month now. For the next couple of years, we have data from Ascend coming out. That's the phase 2B in pancreatic cancer. We will be announcing the completion of enrollment in our bolster trial for cholangiocarcinoma, uh, hopefully sometime very soon, certainly by before the end of the year. And then uh, data from that trial early next year. We expect to be announcing the initiation of a second line cholangiocarcinoma trial and uh, later this year, and then data from that next year. And then data from our collaboration with the Kansas University Cancer Center, the Sendafox study, uh, as well as uh, some additional work coming out of the brain cancer study oh. in uh, in Europe, as well as our study, other studies in Australia. So a steady flow of data. But really, I think the the, the near term uh, important milestone will be the phase two B data coming out uh, sometime in the early fourth quarter of this year. So really a lot to look forward to in the next little yes. while for the investors. And uh, thank you, Dr. Master, for being here to share your uh, story with us. I appreciate the opportunity and uh, I look forward to the conference. Thank you again for having me. Thank you for your time.